We're gonna draw anatomy, and I like to find the landmarks first. So we know that we have the scapular humeral joint right here. That's very easy to feel. You can come up, and this is the back edge of the scapula. You can see it. You can just push in with your fingers here. And then we know that the scapula goes down to this point. You're not going to be able to feel the front because he's got such nice muscle. Here's the spine of the scapula. That's a landmark for us. So that goes down here somewhere. There we go. All right, so now that we have our landmarks of the scapula and the spine of the scapula, we know that our first muscle, the trapezius, starts at about the base of the withers. It attaches into the entire, it attaches into the supraspinous ligament, which runs from about here all the way back to the pelvis. Um, this supraspinous ligament runs up and it turns into the nuchal ligament and goes up to the pole. All right, so from the base of the withers to the spine of the scapula is our trapezius. And I'm just gonna come in here and try to feel, and see if we can feel a little dip here. And it's right there. All right. So we're gonna just go across here. And that is our thoracic trapezius. This is the no-fly zone. We don't put anything here. This, the entire reason there is a pommel on a saddle is to avoid this area. Why? The scapular cartilage is here. The rhomboids attach into the back edge of the scapular cartilage. And then we have the spinalis muscle here. None of that is weight bearing. So the pommel should avoid this completely. We do this in a couple different ways. We have a nice open pommel that's quite wide, almost like a, a U shape. And then we have sufficiently long tree points that will direct the pressure down onto the rib cage. If they're too short and they stop here, then we're putting weight there, period. Okay, so let's move on. We'll go to the back muscles. Come over this way. All right, so you can feel the spine. On most horses, the spine is about this wide. So a gullet channel that's about four fingers on most horses is sufficient. So I'm just gonna draw a line that signifies we don't wanna touch from here over. And then I'm gonna feel for the longissimus muscle, which is the back muscle that runs a, on top of the rib cage. The best, easiest place to feel for it is gonna be in the lumbar area and right about there. Most horses are about one hand, one female hand. I'm gonna get up and stand up here. Stand up, Bubba. All right. So right there is the longissimus. Yep, okay. And then the latissimus, which comes off of the spine, there's a big sheet of fascia, and it comes off like this, and then it comes down and goes underneath the triceps and attaches into the humerus here. So here's the humerus, here's the elbow. Okay, so we have the lats, the longissimus, the trapezius, scapula, the rhomboids, the supraspinous ligament, and then we'll go to the last rib. You can kind of come in here and feel that last rib, and it creeps up like this. It's not straight. There we go, like that. Let's do the pecs here real quick. These are the pecs. All right, and the serratus. The serratus runs up underneath the, the scapula. And then we'll look for the nerve bundle that we want to avoid with the nerve buckles. Right, um, there, right there. Yeah, he's not too sensitive that's, there. Yeah, but we just, did you see him like mm -hmm. kind of go, mm. so that's the nerve bundle right there. Okay, 